There is a microphone here. It's an early morning today. What would we do as like a society without coffee? What would we owe? Hello friends and parents, how you been? Today we are getting technical again with a quick video on the best ways to share photos of your children. So if you're a parent, especially a new one, then let's be honest. Most likely you take hundreds upon hundreds of pictures and videos of your baby, just like the rest of us. In my opinion, these baby photos fall into three categories. First is the personal photos that will be never be seen by anyone else other than your household. The second category is a small subset of these photos that you post on social media. My wife and I are trying to be very mindful of the pictures that we post of our daughter on socials and since her Instagram page is more like an extension of this YouTube channel a lot of times she isn't even on the photos that we post. But you see there's a third category and this is the category that we are going to be talking about today. This category is the photos that you don't want to share publicly but you do want to share with your immediate family. The pictures that you want to send to the grandparents, the great-grandparents, the aunts and uncles and some of your close friends. Because you know the world might not want to see daily pictures and videos of your baby but your loved ones, they sure do. The reason I'm making this video is because many times that I've seen the way parents try to solve this problem is by making Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp group chats and post their pictures and videos there. That solution works, but it has many drawbacks. One, with pictures being mixed up in messages, there really isn't a good place where you can just browse through the pictures. Two, unless you manually save out pictures that you receive in these group chats down to your camera roll, you will never be able to scroll back to pictures that were posted like a year or even just months ago. And that's why those pictures will just get lost and forgotten over time. Also, the quality of these shared pictures and videos can be quite mediocre, especially for videos. There are better ways to share these precious moments with your loved ones, no matter what platform you're using. Breaking the options down by platform, let's start with the one that lives inside Apple's walled garden. So use this if most of your family is iPhone and iPad users. In our case, both my wife and I are iPhone users. Our parents usually inherit the old iPhones that we replace, and pretty much everyone in the family have access to an iPad. For grandparents in general, the iPad is such an amazing tool, I can not recommend enough. It's probably gonna be an entirely separate video. Apple actually has a built-in album sharing feature in their Photos app and in good old Apple fashion it's just so elegant and so frictionless and you know what a lot of time it's overlooked even amongst iPhone users. So let's go through the quick setup. On an iPhone first step on the settings app find your photo settings and make sure that shared albums is turned on. What I really like about shared albums is that you don't need to have iCloud photos turned on for this feature to work. Then tap on your photos app, go to the albums tab at the bottom, then on the top left tap on the plus sign and choose create new shared album. You type in a name and then you can add your partner right away or just click next to create the album. As the album owner you can invite people to subscribe to this album and you can also allow the subscribers to post photos here. You can also make the album publicly accessible on the web if you want to. When you send the invitation to someone they will have the option to subscribe and you will get a notification once they accepted the invitation. And when you want to add a picture or a video to the album it's very easy. As you look at the photo you tap the share icon at the bottom left to bring up the share menu. Here you can select more pictures and videos to share them at the same time. Once you selected everything tap add to shared album, select the album and you can also add the note to your photo sharing. The subscribers will get a notification on their phone that there's new photos in the album. What makes this solution so great is that it's very seamlessly integrated into the system. It was so easy to explain to my grandparents how they can view the pictures or how they can browse through the album or how they can even like or comment on the photos because yes, you can actually like and comment on the pictures. So instead of having this passive photo album experience, it's almost like you can create your own mini private Instagram. On the For You tab, you also have a shared album activity feed where you can see the uploads, the comments and the likes in one spot for all your shared albums. It's great. There is one massive benefit that I've never seen on any other platform is that the shared album lives on iCloud, but it doesn't count against your iCloud storage. There is this limit of 5,000 photos and videos per album, but it doesn't count against anybody's iCloud storage. And it's not even taking up space on anybody's device. So when our daughter was born, I created the Annabelle the Cute shared album. I invited my wife, our parents, and our grandparents. Then over time, we kept asking our close family members whether they are interested in subscribing to this album but we warn them we post here a lot so even if they say yes 
No hard feelings if they ever want to just leave. Nobody left so far. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> so almost three years in, currently we have 2,152 photos and 602 videos in the shared album. Wow, that's, it sounds like a lot. <laughs> and this album, it's safe, it's private, and it's very easily searchable and accessible for the family. Every time we add an image or video, our family members get a notification, and every time they like or comment on a photo, we get a notification. This album looks so great on an iPad screen, the uploaded photos and even the videos are high quality. For example, just this morning was Annabelle's first ever Irish dance competition. It was an amazing morning, she did fantastic. So obviously I took a lot of pictures and I also took this seven minute long 4k video And it was so easy to share that video with the family. I just added to the album I didn't have to worry about file size or conversion. I didn't have to worry about cloud storage space Nothing just uploaded it and it's there and everybody in the family is able to watch that video in high quality and it just, it works, it's just so simple. So yes, I'm a big fan of this feature on iOS. The ability to comment and not having to worry about cloud storage really makes this solution great. The only downside is of course that it's only for Apple devices. It has to live inside the Apple ecosystem. Now the moment you step out of the Apple garden, that's when things get a little tricky. Whether you and your entire family is on Android or you're some kind of in a mixed bag of iPhone and Android users, I think the closest you will get to a similarly elegant solution is by using Google Photos. Since most Android users already have a Google account, you might only have to convince just a few iPhone or iPad family members to create a Google account so they can access the shared album. I won't get deep into Google Photos in this video simply because I have no experience with it, but I set it up, I downloaded it just to see how it works. One drawback I've noticed right away is that as a creator of the shared album, the uploaded content does count against your cloud storage. I'm not sure how much free storage you get when you create a Google account. I feel like it's only five gigabytes and then you can expand that to 15 if you set up auto backup on your phone. But the reality is that if you're gonna use that album the way, you know, with like over 2000 pictures and 600 videos, then I feel like very quickly you will get to the point when you will need to purchase more and more storage space from Google. There you go, if you're an iPhone, user, then check out Shared Albums. I think it's fantastic and it's often overlooked. I will link the support page in the description. If you're on Android, then probably Google Photos is your best bet, but there are plenty better videos out there if you're going down that route. Bottom line is, stop using group chats to share pictures and videos with your loved ones. There are better ways out there. This is it. That's it. As this was today's video. If you found this video helpful, then a like would be much appreciated. We have a toddler, we are parenting, we're trying to figure out parenting. So if you're into that stuff, then click subscribe. And now that the video is ending, thank you for watching, by the way. You might as well continue watching. Here's a video when we talk about what's in our baby bag, super fancy stuff. Or maybe you can watch this one that YouTube thinks you should watch next. See you next week.